known as the Birmingham Boys, come from a property known as Birmingham, probably from a Pride of Lion there. And since reaching, I suppose, sub-adulthood, they're not quite adult, I'd say these boys are about four. I'm not sure if anybody's got an age on them, or how long they've been followed. I'm just looking through some of my literature to see if there is anything here. Uh, the Timbers. No. Anyways, an interesting concept of male coalitions that once reaching a certain age, they need to leave dad's territory and they need to go and head up their own legacy, I suppose one could call it. And so they have to become a little bit nomadic for a while until they find themselves a pride that will accept them and a pride that they can settle down with and then reproduce with. At the moment there are other big coalitions. There's the coalition of males known as the Majingalans that I remember from a few years ago when, when they were about this age, five of them, when they first moved in here and tried to take over from the Mapojos. Then there are the uh, Matimba males, two of which are seen fairly regularly here. There were originally six adult males in the Matimba coalition. Um, You hear the cackling of the red bull woodhoopoo in the background. A family of them. Can't see them yet. Sound like two families having a competition. He's going to get hot, that one flat in the middle there. He's going to have to move soon. And they're fairly full looking. They must have eaten recently. Coalition of four growing males like this are likely to concentrate on big animals like zebra and buffalo.
very comfortable cats. cloud in the south that might be coming over unless the sun burns it away. Seems he heard something. It's remarkable how attentive cats are. I mean, even uh, domestic cats, you will find that there is a way for them to block out ambient noise, no matter how much of it there is. But to perk up at the sound of anything that is of interest to them. This little low cloud that's starting to come in, softening the sunlight a little bit, which is good in a sense because it might not force them into the shade too early. I think since we don't really get to spend much time with them, I think it's be nice to just, we're going to sit for a while. It 
Dr. Evidently, we lost a little bit of the beginning of this. Uh, just to mention, we're up at a place called Sandy Patch. There used to be a, a beautiful lioness here with her cubs. Her name was Sandy Patch. She was quite a famous cat. And these are the Matimba males, or rather, sorry, the Birmingham boys, the Birmingham males that have come in. Finally, my chance to meet them. I haven't met them yet. We're sort of right on the entrance road to Voyatela Lodge, so if they're only just moving in now from the north, good chance they might be around for a little bit. Cool temperatures in overnight. This morning was, was very, very cool. Uh, quite crisp, brisk, I guess you could call it. There wasn't a cloud in the sky, and slowly but starting, slowly but surely, there's a little bit of low cloud wafting in off of Mozambique. Now, ordinarily, without cloud, the sun would be getting quite hot now, and that would force them into the shade. And I'm hoping that with this little bit of low cloud, they might stay out in the open a little bit if it does get a little bit cloudy. And they could even get active if something were to come along, if there were, if there was anything that presented itself, opportunity-wise, I mean, for hunting. You've seen these boys before? Four. Five. Five. So we're missing two. Yeah. Interesting. I wonder if that wasn't... No, there was only one with that lion. There was lion up in Manuleti yesterday. Yeah. It must be missing somewhere. Mm. Here, a grey headed bush shrike in the background, also known as the ghost bird. Or my rendition of it. One of the largest of the shrikes, very heavy beaked shrike, skulks around thick bush, not very often seen, almost ventriloquial in its call because you can hardly ever find it by following the call.
beautiful posture, ears forward, interested in something, listening, or even looking at something. Suddenly heating up quite a bit, very quickly. <laughs> it's getting hot. It's getting very hot. hot. These boys are going to want to move into shade soon. What is the biggest coalition of males that I've seen? That's a question from Valerie. Hello Valerie, Pennsylvania. Seven sub-adults. I once up in the Timbavati near home 20 odd years ago, I was running a camp near my place. A little place called Mbali, part of Motswari. And we had a, sub, a group of sub-adults, seven sub-adult males 
And I suppose apart from them, and I did, I moved on to the Okavango Delta after meeting them, so I didn't, I wasn't in that area for some time after that. And I don't know what happened to them. But other than that, Coalition of Six. There it comes. I could see that coming too. Wanting to come to the brothers. Moving to the better shade. Oof. And collapse. Lion doing what lion do. They conserve energy. These big coalitions of males is not a thing that is I've known from my past. I mean, in my past, the most that I've had, I'm talking about 20, 30 years ago, was, was maybe a coalition of two males. And it's only really in the last decade or so that there's been a predominance of large coalitions that are constantly taking over from each other, large number of males being born. And they don't necessarily have to be litter mates, they could just be pride mates, slightly different ages, males of different ages that leave the pride at a similar time. They would be similar, they would always be of similar age. Okay, copy that. Sounds like Vim is Back in FC, still dealing with a few technical issues, but uh, we're going to be crossing over to Alex because he's found something else for us this morning. We're going to stick around and see what happens here with these lions. And in the meantime, uh, enjoy what Alex has for you, and we'll see you in a short while. Okay, we're here. Okay. 
Okay, welcome uh, ladies and gents. So we've gone from uh, one member of the uh, big cat family to another one. Now, apologies for the uh, lack of a clear, clear view of this, uh, of this guy. We do know it's a male. Um, we did have a shot earlier where we could see that it definitely was a, a boy. It's one of uh, Krula's sons. But we're not 100% sure which one. It's either going to be Quarantine or Kanuma. I've got a sneaking suspicion that it is Quarantine. I've just got a bit of a brief uh, glimpse of his face. And his spot pattern looked a lot like Quarantine's. And his face was a lot darker um, than uh, Kanuma's. So I'm pretty certain this is uh, Quarantine male. But at the moment, he's... Uh, Hiding. Now it is actually quite, if this is quarantine, it is very interesting to see that he's in the same area that. Uh oh, welcome back. Uh, we seem to have lost Alex. Alex is somewhere down near where we had Karula yesterday. I believe it was quarantine mail. I mean, it seemed like there were there was a bit to eat in that area. I don't think there's any sign of Karula. fall on top of his brother. Just broke heads. No. Not much in the way of affection today.
<laughs> okay, we seem to be stabilizing Alex's feed, which is good because we want to go back to Alex now. So what we're going to do is hopefully stay with him for a little bit and see what he can find for us. While while you're there, I'm just going to take a ride around here. These line are not going anywhere. So I'll see you in a little bit and we'll come back to them as soon as we can after a little while. So goodbye for now. Okay, welcome back uh, everybody. Apologies for the um, break up in signal there. Um, we are in a bit of a drainage line with some pretty high banking and some pretty thick foliage so that's potentially interfering with the signal so I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, we're with one of Karula's, uh, one of Karula's boys. Not 100% certain as to which one it is but we have got a 50-50 uh, chance of getting uh, well, IDing this one, it's either quarantine or Kanuma. Um, I think this is quarantine. His facial markings are just that bit darker than uh, we're used to seeing on the on Kanuma. Uh, unfortunately, we can't get a great shot of his uh, of his face because he's in quite a bit of a thicket there. It's a thicket where uh, Scott had. Uh, Oh, that's a lovely shot. Uh, had Karula yesterday. Uh, as I was saying, it's quite interesting to see him here. Um, on one side of him, there's the Tamboti tree, which uh, I found Kunyuma. Um, oh, he's moving. Okay, we're just going to pull around these bushes, guys. He seems to be coming out. Hopefully, the single signal will hold. The higher ground of this, uh, Welcome back. There's been some lilac breasted rollers complaining bitterly while we've been with the lion somewhere down here. They also, well, with them sleeping, I'm just going to wander around a little bit just to see if we can find anything in the immediate vicinity. There also are some mushrooms. Now it's this time of the year with a lot of moisture on the ground, a lot of fungi are starting to grow, and I'm kind of interested in mushrooms because of the diversity that we have with rotting wood, um, fermenting and rotting animal dung, because you get specific species that are either going to be on dead wood or in animal dung. Okay, just a quick link, we've got to go back to Alex quickly, we'll see you shortly while I'm looking around for something. Okay guys, I think my could be Kanuma. Yeah, this uh, this could be Kanuma actually thinking about it and looking at his face. Um, he did give us a bit of snarl, a bit of a rev. And let's see if he goes up this tree. The kill still is up there. Oh, there we go. He's being quite protective over this kill. I'm surprised uh, yesterday that he uh, he let um, Karula. Seems there might be a little bit of trouble with Alex. I think if Alex is down in that drainage line, I think that might be what it is below that big jackalberry. Well, you're back with me. And we're gonna head back to those lion boys shortly. 
now that I've come to investigate to see why those rollers were shouting, they've stopped shouting. I can't even see where they are or were. Hippo tracks must be heading off to Sydney's dam. A couple of highways there, in fact, that crisscross this access road. Mainly for two reasons, just up ahead on the left, well, about another maybe kilometre or so, it's sort of one of the boundaries of the Sabi sand that does a, a dog leg into Manuleti. And so a lot of animals moving through the Sabi sand will come through this very narrow corridor, as it were, hills. All sorts of game trails here that carry a, a variety of animals. There were some elephant tracks heading south into the Sabi sand from Manuleti this morning, a family of elephants, so I'm hoping that maybe we'll get to see some more elephant in the near future. They do cover so much ground that, that sometimes they will come across Juma and, and, and leave within an hour or two. I'm going to do a little loop. Morning, Dove. And so, back to Jigga. Seem to have that signal stable. I'm going to go back to, hopefully, you seeing what Alex has got there. We'll see you in a bit. Craig, do you copy? Oh, it's another Birmingham boys. Okay guys, uh, welcome back. Um, just to reconfirm and recap, uh, we were sat with uh, Kanuma. I uh, mistakenly uh, thought this was quarantine. But uh, thank you for, for all your emails and tweets to confirm that this is Kanuma. Um, he, came, he emerged from um, the thicket, uh, which is in the centre of this kind of uh, gully that we're positioned in. Uh, and he returned to the kill, which is up the tree, which, uh, which I saw uh, Karula feeding on yesterday. Um, he did give us a bit of a snarl, because uh, we were on the, my fault. Uh, it was a little bit in a bit of a poor position. Uh, he just gave us a bit of a snarl, just to basically say, back off, get away from my kill. So we, uh, we gave him his space and uh, he proceeded to go up the tree and he's now uh, enjoying um, a bit of a leftover snack. But uh, yeah, this is uh, definitely Kanuma, now I can see his face properly. Just look at that spot patter, patter, patters, uh, patterns on his shoulder, they're absolutely superb. Fantastic markings and nose rosettes are absolutely stunning. He's just up in the uh, branches of a tamboti. He's got some uh, nice branches for him to climb on and uh, just store his food and keep it nice and safe. Now, I'm still a bit confused as to who potentially next. Um, obviously, it'd be a good indication if we saw who dragged uh, dragged it up the tree, but we, uh, we didn't see that unfortunately. But we've now seen two different leopards feeding on this. Now we, we still ooh, got a bit of a tidbit. Um, now we know that uh, Kanuma does still uh, 
share his mum's kills. So maybe he's still a tiny bit dependent on her, but maybe he's just a bit of a, a bit of a freeloader, a bit of a mummy's boy. Still an absolutely gorgeous specimen. He looks quite comfortable there. Just counterbalancing with the, uh, with the legs there, getting a good grip. Such an agile cat, they really are. Powerful drills making some uh, quite light work of that carcass. I'm just going to take a couple of pictures, so if you do hear a shutter, I apologise. Before I came to this area, I'd probably only seen one or two leopards. So being here and being able to spend such quality time with these absolutely amazing cats is pretty special for me. Elusive creatures with pretty, pretty big home ranges, so they do traverse quite large areas. Apologies for the uh, branch that's just in front of his face there. Um, we do have a up and coming tree surgeon on the vehicle, so maybe you can uh, scamper up there and uh, just move it. What do you think? Why not? Okay, cool.
just had a question come through from Jenny in Virginia. Good uh, morning, Jenny. Hope you're well this morning. Thank you for joining us and welcome aboard. Um, Jenny's question is, um, so the, the radio was cracking up a bit, so let's see if we get the question right. Um, will a carcass um, be too, uh, will, it, will a carcass go off if it's left up there for too long? Uh, will they still eat it if it's uh, been up there for too long? Um, to be honest, Jenny, uh, I don't think the leopards would leave a carcass up there for long enough um, for it to actually spoil too much for them to eat. Uh, I mean, they have got pretty strong constitutions. Um, so they've got a, they can eat meat that's, uh, that's been, um, I suppose, left in an area uh, longer than, uh, well, they can eat it and not suffer any consequences much longer than we can. They've got a lot stronger constitution than we can. Um, but yeah, this carcass, they can usually feed on a carcass for about two or three, maybe four days. Um, but to be honest, if a carcass is left, I don't think, well, I don't think it's going to be that um, much of common occurrence if a, a carcass is left for it to spoil. Um, unless something does happen to a particular leopard, I don't think really there's going to be much um, opportunity for it to spoil. I mean, potentially if a, if a leopard is chased off a kill, then there is always that chance, but uh, I don't think there's real much uh, time scale where a leopard will kind of leave a kill up a tree and then come back to it maybe a week or so later and, and, uh, and consume it. I think it'll, by that time the uh, scavengers that are in the area have already picked it clean. So I don't think there's really much opportunity for it to spoil. That's a great shot, Jase. Just getting his paws dangling off there. But uh, good question, Jenny. Thank you. That's superb. Just giving us a bit of a bit of a look, just to. Uh, Make sure we're not encroaching. Sorry, encroaching on his, uh, on his snacking. Now you may have seen a few bits just dropping uh, to the floor. Uh, that's potentially going to attract scavengers, maybe hyenas, maybe some jackal. Probably not jackal in this particular area because it's a bit, um, a bit too overgrown for them. But you never know. Keeping an eye out though, just to make sure that uh, that there is nothing going to uh, cause a threat to him or to his dinner. Gents, just as I was saying that about the uh, scavengers, we've just had a spotted hyena come in. How about that for timing? I think his ears must have been burning. That's probably what he was noticing. So at the moment, guys, we've got Kanuma up a tree, being on an impala, and then down below him, pretty much directly below the tree, we've got a spotted hyena picking up the uh, scraps that, he's, that have been dropped. Now, it would be quite interesting to see if, uh, or to know, if this was one of the hyenas that uh, Karula encountered the other day. This is a great bit of interaction. It just kind of proves uh, or kind of explains a bit more uh, visually uh, the question that Jenny posed about uh, a kill um, going to spoil. So nothing's generally left. Now I'm just keeping an eye behind this because there's only one hyena here that we can see at the moment. And it's having a good sniff around. And it's been quite wary. So it could potentially be other hyena in the area as well. Or she, can't really tell from here. Just be quite cautious when it's going below the tree. 
potentially picking up a few more tidbits. Kinyuma doesn't seem too phased by the presence of this hyena at the moment. He's quite safe up that tree. He's got a good grip on his uh, on his prize. Jason's on the leopard, I'm just keeping an eye on this hyena just to see what it's up to. Well, this is excellent guys, this is really nice, nice to see. And it's just at the base of the tree, as you can see, just having a sniff round. Just to check if there are any other tasty morsels that it can scrounge or scavenge. It's trotting off, maybe it's had its fill. Maybe there's not too much uh, else of interest underneath that tree for it at the moment. But I'm pretty sure it will come back at some point. Quite a nice little area that we're sat in actually at the moment. There's a lot of activity here, a lot of bird activity and cracking trees. We've got a leopard in one of them. What more could you ask for? I'm not sure how much of this colour is actually left. Doesn't appear to be a huge amount left.
There's some Franklin's alarm calling behind us. He's obviously upsetting them. Had a question come through from uh, Elizabeth. Good morning, Elizabeth. Uh, hope you're enjoying the drive. Welcome aboard. Uh, Elizabeth's question is uh, asking if hyena are uh, uh, related to cats or to dogs. Um, neither, really, uh, Elizabeth. They're more closely related to uh, the mongoose family. Um, I mean, they do have uh, slight traits uh, that are more feline than, uh, than canine, but uh, they're more closely related to, uh, to the mongoose family. Um, a lot of people do say that they are related to, uh, to dogs and cats, but uh, no, unfortunately it's, it's more related to, to the mongoose family. So, nice question, thank you Elizabeth. But, saying that they are in their uh, Classification, the scientific classification, the, the hyena day do have their own separate um, class, as it was. So they are kind of in a class of their own, but uh, as to what they're more closely related to, it's uh, it's the mongoose family rather than the actual cat or dog. It's quite interesting to see how things kind of evolve and develop to uh, suit their environments. that Hain is a, a definite good example of how a species can adapt to survive and uh, use its environment to its advantage. Good old gnaw there. There's a few people been asking if uh, about the uh, the other impala that was t uh, taken by Karula um, and placed in the uh, Chackleberry tree, which is um, kind of opposite to where we're sat at the moment. Uh, we did have a look as we drove uh, down into the gully to see if it was still there. It is still there. Uh, didn't really have a, a good uh, look to see how much of the uh, how much of it is actually left and how much has been consumed, but uh, it is still it is still up there. Um, and it is quite interesting to see that the, the trees are pretty much opposite um, each other in this uh, in this little gully. A nice big thicket in the middle, just uh, for the uh, cats to come and take a rest in, just to take some cover. But, uh, there is the the baby impala is still in that tree. But, um, we didn't really take too much time to have a look and see how much of it has actually been consumed. Okay. Just watching Kanima eat. Watching. 
almost looked a bit like uh, what happens when you um, dangle a piece of string in front of a domestic cat or your house cat. Darling is just flying past and making some noises. Okay, he's looking a bit more cautious now. He's just having a look around. is fairly firmly wedged up in that tree. Definitely enjoying his breakfast. He seems to be going through uh, part of the neck and part of the cheeks at the moment, which is nice and uh, fleshy. using that long, rough tongue. It's kind of loosen the meat a little bit. Definitely one pretty cat. A question from Brenda in Pennsylvania. Good morning, Brenda. I uh, hope you're well. And, uh, thank you for joining us on this drive. Uh, Brenda's asking if, um, if leopards ever uh, eat their kill on the ground. Um, yes, they do, Brenda. Uh, it's not always when they'll treat a kill. Um, just watching what he's doing. Uh, yeah, as I was saying, it's not. They won't always treat their kill. Um, I suppose it, uh, it depends on, uh, on the size of the kill. Uh, for example, if it's, um, well, not always in the... Uh, I was going to give an example, but uh, Karula kind of yesterday proved that uh, they do take small kills up trees. Mark, yeah? We are affirmative, we welcome. Hi everybody, welcome back to us here with the Birmingham Boy Lions. 
we only got three. I have to take a little bit of a drive around, kind of around the block as it were. No sign of the other two of these males. Although they could be maybe somewhere behind some of the bushes. I think mean, lion are sleeping at the moment. And uh, they could be under some of this quarry. There's some rather thick quarry bush around here that could have the other two. Weather's changing every minute, every couple of minutes. We've got some pretty low cloud moving in that's cooling things down quite a bit. But every now and then the sun comes out and it's exceptionally hot when it does. Well, it's getting hot. It's going to get a lot hotter if it burns off all of this cloud. But also expecting that they're going to need to move into some shade pretty soon because they're running out of it down here. Fortunately for them, grass is very wet, it's very damp from the dew from last night. There was no cloud cover last night. Judging by what these cats are doing at the moment, and the fact that they're probably not going to go anywhere, perhaps we need to go for a short drive, see what else we can find. wanted to move away move away from that uh, other vehicle there are some youngsters there that are a little restless it's hard to sit in a quiet sighting like that but I don't think those cats are going anywhere and I'd like to get a little bit of an idea of what's been moving around so we're going to take a drive Maybe we'll take Aubrey's Road in Gallagher and see if there are any signs of elephant. There were some elephant tracks heading north, just north of these lions, but that was during the night at some point. I guess there's a 
only so much we can do sitting with sleeping cats. The thing is with sleeping cats like that is that they can get active very, very quickly. They can jump up and go into a hunt almost instantly if something came along. heard from anyone much this morning questions at wildearth.tv or hashtag safari live if you're going to tweet but uh, questions at wildearth.tv our email address from Nashville in Tennessee. Good morning Mary, a very interesting question. Mary is saying that one of these Birmingham boys, there is one male there that has a bit of a bad left eye and wanting to know if as they get older is it likely that he's going to get pushed out or left behind or suffer some other fate. Not necessarily Mary, actually he's got a greater chance of survival the fact because he is with the coalition. So the fact that he's with his brothers means that he is able to he's able to hunt and, and, and feed better than if he was on his own. So no, I, I personally I don't think so. Look at this fresh early dung. There are elephant around. That's very fresh. And there are a lot of branches that are broken on the road and they're all old, that's all old stuff. But this elephant, this was like an elephant bull. I think I could find his tracks just across the through. Maybe if we go back to Gallagher Short or something, if we just wander around here, we might be lucky to find him. We need an elephant. But no, I think generally when, when you have a situation where one individual in a coalition like this is disadvantaged through some physical setback. It's not possibly that the brothers will look after him, but of course he has that advantage that the others will be hunting and he will be part taking part of that. Otherwise I don't think it will hinder him that much at all.
least two packs. One that comes in from the north from Manialeti, a smaller pack. And we've seen a larger pack on Arethusa that have come through onto Juma uh, about a week ago, Dave. Uh, they, they were here. We had a good few game drives with them recently. But since they do move in fairly large circles, well, large areas, Be voicing around this again. Even to never knows. Generally, once they've, once they've been through and then move on, it be a while for them to come. Activity on this road last night. Some blossoms here. If we can try and get to see. I don't see too many of these teaks flowering because of the way the elephants farm them. But here's a nice picture of flowering teak. And I'm just looking at a juvenile lizard as well while we're at it. Something in its mouth. Eating a grass, I don't know if you can get that lizard, it might be too, too low on the ground. Beautiful flowers of the round leaf teak. Can you see that lizard? Uh, it looks like a juvenile sandfelt lizard. Barely good, it's just been eating something. been eating something quite big that it's still battling to swallow. Okay, let's move along. Might have been able to capture that on my camera and zoom in a bit later, try and get an idea of that lizard. Juveniles often have different colorations. It looks like it could be a juvenile yellow throated plated, but it would be a bit small for that. It would be a hatchling if it was. It's all of about three inches long.
is long. A lot of the grassland lizards that we get here become almost impossible to see because they move so fast. There, are, there, are, there is the one plated lizard, there is a group of lizards known as seps, which are related to the plated lizards. They exceptionally long-tailed lizards they do still have limbs. Seps actually have vestigial limbs, if not have lost their limbs entirely, and they can be long and as thick. In fact, they look very similar to some of the sand snakes. But of course, they, you know, being a lizard, they have that very typical lid face and ear. Snakes don't have ears. Um, but virtually impossible to find. And even when you do, all you see is a little blur through the grasses. Striped sand a lot of the grass lizards. A number of lizards that are very beautiful, but just very elusive. I'm starting to burn this cloud away now. difference between a lizard and a skink? That's a question from Lewis. Greetings, Lewis. Um, the skinks tend to be a lot more smooth scaled, shiny. Lizards tend to be more rough scaled. Um, I guess both lizards and skinks are, well, they all lizard family, so it's just different types of lizards, really. Skinks, very, very shiny and smooth scaled, slightly different. Toe configurations, different colors. I think one of the other things that I could that, that comes to mind is that lizards or rather skinks, but I might be wrong on this, there might be some lizards as well, but skinks, a number of the skinks actually give birth live. They're what we call ovoviviparous. In other words, they, the, the, the eggs develop with inside the mother's body and she, she appears to give birth live to baby skinks. Lizards tend to mostly lay eggs. But if we look at the whole lizard family, it's broken into a bunch of different things and different categories. We start with the monitor lizards, which are the biggest. We have the plated lizards, the seps, skinks, chameleons, I suppose, although they're pretty much in a group of their own. And of course the geckos and the dwarf geckos. Legless skinks, legless lizards. We even get things called worm lizards. We even get things called blind legless worm lizards. Fossorial species that live underground and they look like giant earthworms. They look very similar to an earthworm, but they're actually a reptile. Quite remarkably. Lost all pigment, lost eyesight, lost limbs. All because they don't need them in the world that they live in. So they've all become vestigial organs. We'd like to show you more of 
lizards and skinks and if we can. If they sit still long enough. That one was very really lucky, that one was eating something, but was sitting still. But a little bit too close to the vehicle. Because it only came out once I'd stopped to look at the flowers, the morning flowers for the ladies, the round leaf teak in blue. Places where we don't get elephants, the round leaf teak reaches the height of ruler trees, if not bigger, beautiful big trees. And of course those are all in full bloom at the moment. We're making a large Monzoe's Road. Monzoe's Road heading up to Impala Plains near the mast. Looking for elephant tracks. Looking for elephant, period. No right now and settle for some tracks. Georgia, Llewellyn, Llewellyn in Atlanta. Hello, Llewellyn. Question about lion manes. What age do they become full? Do they lose the mane and grow again? Do they continually grow? Llewellyn wanting to know a little bit about lion manes. Well, largely, Llewellyn, the mane itself is a genetic thing. So there are lions that carry the gene for bigger manes than others. In fact, there are some areas in Africa where I have lived where the adult male, six to eight year old adult male lions don't even have a full mane like these young boys do. I'm guessing that they're sort of in the region of about four years old. But it's because of the genetics of manes and how that works that sometimes a three year old can have a heavier mane than a five year old. So these boys could be a little older but the mane does tend to be full. By the, by the age of five, um, a, a lion's mane tends to be as pretty, well, full, but not entirely, because as he grows older, the mane does grow longer, and it, and it also it depends entirely on the, the area that, we just, that those lions are in, because places like the Kalahari and up in Serengeti, where one is likely to get colder temperatures. There do tend to be bigger, heavier manes in the older males in, in, in some of those areas. Um, of course, the mane is, is, is a, a measure of, of genetic prowess, and so it becomes an issue when it comes to sexual selection of the females, the females in some places will go for the heavier main line 
the darker main lines, and so that gene will. Hang on. So what goes for lion here in the Kruger National Park might not be valid for what lion go through in places like the Serengeti and Masaimara or a place like the Sulu Game Reserve which is completely different where there are male lions that don't have manes. Then there is a place in Botswana I believe, I don't know how true it is, I've only seen photographs somewhere in Botswana where there's some females that have manes. Um, for different areas, having different measures of selection that determine the overall population, the overall gene pool of the population of males, whether the mains are going to be big or small or non-existent. There is some evidence to suggest that temperature plays a big role in the density of the main, places that do get cold. And then of course there is the other factor that the mane is there to protect the neck and to protect that part of the body during fighting. And pile of pain. People asking about youngsters, children, human children on game drives because there was a child at that lion sighting. It was the same vehicle that had children on at the Karula sighting the other day. And look, you can't you can't expect children to sit still. Unfortunately, um, children will be children. They don't understand the concept. They don't understand the necessity quiet and for introspection and things like that and then, and then I suppose by the same token adults just don't really adults don't really care but I just also have to reiterate too that the vehicle that is here with children is one of the landowners from a neighboring property here in the Savi Sand if he owns the property he's allowed to do what he likes I don't know what, whether the lodges have policies. I think some of the lodges do have policies in terms of ages of children on game drives. I've personally had some very hair-raising moments with big male lion and children not being able to keep quiet because sometimes a child crying can sound just like a young impala or a steenbuck or a daika being killed by something and animals especially lion react to that. Um, that vehicle the other day, there was a vehicle with a, practically a newborn child on it. Um, it's, it's up to the landowners to be responsible about that. Um, and these are people who own the properties. So they, while they have traversing here on Juma, they can essentially have whoever they want to on their vehicles. These are not game lodge vehicles. These are privately owned vehicles with um, with the landowners. Uh, something that I experienced back home as well with landowners. A lot of people will come from the city once or twice a year because they own property maybe a few more times a year. They don't have to go through the training that the guides have to go through because they own the property. They can they can they can drive themselves if they if they want to, which they do. And so they might not be aware of what is needed and what is required at a sighting because well, they land on it. I suppose in much the same way as when I'm at home in the Timbavati and I've got lion or something to watch. I'm fortunate and I don't have other people coming onto our property. so. Fortunately, we don't have any other vehicles traversing. I don't have game drive vehicles traversing. But very often I find animals on the main road near my place, in which case I, 
I come into contact with game drive vehicles and other landowners. And unfortunately, they do misbehave. Unfortunately, they don't really have compassion or understanding for the tortoise. Excuse me, tortoise. A lot of these hingeback tortoises these days. even etiquette they, and, and they can uh, they can upset a lot of people and they can upset animals there's nothing that can be done about it you know, a long time ago a lot of this land was being sold for like next to nothing because the only thing people thought of doing was either agriculture or farming you know, cattle farming or some form of agriculture unfortunately agriculture didn't make its way here and when the Sabi sand was established already back in the late 50s, I think it was, about 1956 or something, there were people conscientious enough to want to protect this land from farming and agriculture. Um, up where I am, the few properties, the few landowners that did try and bring in cattle soon learned that you can't farm cattle in an area where there's wildlife, mostly because Oh, cows are just a lot easier to kill than buffalo. So they would have problems with lion and the stories of the numbers of lion that used to be shot just to try and protect the cattle is actually quite shocking. And hopefully their populations will eventually get back to that sort of status, but it's difficult nowadays. Lion is an endangered, becoming a threatened species. There is disease and persecution and habitat loss that is shrinking the lion population of Africa considerably. So a lot of times people have inherited properties, people who don't necessarily have the understanding for nature in the bush other than then it's just a fun thing to do for a holiday. Go to your private game farm and take a bunch of friends for the Christmas New Year holidays and have fun. Um, it's a wonderful thing to do. I think one of the reasons why I moved away from the lion is because it's very distracting for me to sit with the predators. Why? Okay, we might want to switch to Alex. No, you can switch to Alex, it's fine. Well, if he's at the lion, I will do. I was making my, I'm sort of almost back at them now, but if Alex is there, I guess I'll try and go and find Kanuma. Oh, I'm still trying to look for elephant. Copy. Have you got good signal from him there? make our way further east. Alex has now come up to where the lion are, which is, well, we're just almost here. And we're going to leave him with the lions. I want to go back to Aubrey's Road 
and do another loop around just to see if that elephant might have become visible somewhere. Set foot on the road again. So let's head a little bit east and south. Beautiful day. I suppose you could say beautiful days. I started off my first day of the year yesterday with a big fire the whole day. I've seen some of uh, some of the animals up in Manileti on the way into work. Okay, so while I'm looking for this big pachyderm, that we did see some dung. Uh, I'm going to hand you back over to Alex. We'll see you in a little while. Just from here, I'm going to make my way back to Juma Waterhole and then to Kunuma. Welcome back, guys. Um, as you can see, we've, cha we've changed location. Um, we've come to see, uh, see the lions that uh, Mark spent a bit of time with yesterday. So. Uh, it's a bit of a cat-filled morning at the moment, from uh, leopards to lions. Now, I'm not too sure which uh, which guys these are. Um, from the chatter that I've heard on the uh, on the Game Drive channel, I believe this is the uh, uh, guys that have been dubbed the Birmingham Boys, or the Birmingham Males. But at the moment, can only see three of them, so not too sure where the other two are. Now there's a lion just uh, to our to the right of these two, and he's looking pretty intently through the bushes. So I wonder if there's something just that's just caught his interest. And the other two have pretty much gone back to being flat cat. Using my binos to see if I can see anything that he might potentially be looking at. I can't see anything. Perhaps it's just my imagination. You can start to see how uh, how his mane's developing. He's got a bit of a punk stripe going on on the back of his head there. Again, I think. Uh, big sigh and flop back down. See how muscular his shoulders are. Those, uh, I'll use those big shoulders to help drag down his, um, his prey, latch onto him with those massive claws and paws of his. How will be used to pull down the, uh, the prey from behind and snooze. I'm 
Yeah, if anybody can tell me if these guys were confirmed as being the Birmingham boys, that would be really, really helpful. Um, there's only three of them. I wonder where the other two have gone. That crunching noise you can hear in the uh, background, the uh, line to the right, just rolled over and there's uh, some dead branches. And it's kind of just rolled onto them. I'm just using one of the uh, branches as a bit of a paw rest. I think judging from the uh, profiles that I was reading on these guys and from uh, just the guesstimations, these guys are probably about two and a half years old, maybe three. Pretty uh, sizable coalition. If there are any uh, prides in the area with, uh, with a dominant male, if they did come across these guys, it would be a pretty formidable fight that he would have in his hands. I'm just going to probably move around position it a little bit. Just get a bit of a different view for you guys to look at. Now can you hear some um, birds alarm calling probably to just uh, to our right. Uh, I wonder if there's something in there. In the meantime, I'm just going to change the position. Welcome back to Wendy, Canele, Wendy slash Canele, and we are going to try and get, maybe if we can, get around the other side of the dam, go and have a look to see if we can find Kanuma. I'm still trying to find something else. We did scuffle it. Ah, so he's moved. Just got word that. Kanuma has moved. We might not even get to see him if he's moving and he's heading up that drainage line. Gets very, very thick. That Tamburki part. But some buffalo actually heading up towards Sandy Pass. It'll be a couple of minutes before they get there, but it's interesting. They are heading to the west, northwest, straight towards that area where the lion are. Beast and Impala oh, kicking ready to move into the bush or for the open area. Come back and see them in a bit. Here's the bull lying separate, watching the herds. Wow. 
why would you do that? Grasses and plants starting to get rather tall now on the open area. I guess a foot taller than they were when I first got here. A lot of the red zinnias under the trees where I guess in the past there's been overgrazing. You find a lot of the alien species of plants that become prolific. The alien species that become a pest are plants that favor denuded or overgrazed areas so they invariably in places where there is shade where animals have stood under trees probably in days when there was fencing here and animals were restricted to movement or restricted in their movement Can. Will be coming? I just want to mention to Alex that uh, if he's going to stick around that area, there was a small group of buffalo being up towards where those line are. The sun going right? be able to get back to that left sounds like the arbor of there. Look, sounds like the rulers as well again so, I need to think of some 
on the end of drive. Go back there this afternoon because if Karula is there, we're going to fish. Oh, Alex. Um, so, wait, why in there? People never learn. They'll still put rocks in road areas and it'll just make worse erosion the next time it rains. Never learn. Us humans continue to make the same mistakes decade after decade. Rita, hello Rita, morning to you, one of our local South Africans here in Johannesburg. How far can an elephant see? Oh, Rita, that's a very difficult question to establish because elephants aren't really interested in things very far away from them. They, they're only really interested in their immediate surroundings. It's also the position of the eye of an elephant. Uh, they're mostly sort of looking, focusing close. But I don't know, I don't know how to answer that because it's, it's, it's a bit hard to... a bit hard to, to, to work that out, really. They are considered fairly short-sighted, but that, as I say, that's mostly because they're only really concentrating on things in their immediate vicinity. from again uh, station of the lock on Gary Catlin uh, Richard Mark here um, is there space for one copy there thanks a lot okay let's go and see Cat. Cloud building up again. One minute it's burning away, the next minute it's fighting back. Have a dark one hanging over our left shoulder.
the ruler is, it's really only visual from one vehicle. Um, so I'm going to have a look down here in the drainage line. Okay, Evidently he was lying on the sand. Yeah, one of Brula's boys, I think Kunuma. And supposedly that's Karula back at Dippleberry again. Still, I can still see a little bit of that impala. And that young impala in the tree. Let's just move along. There was talk of him lying here somewhere here in the sand unless he's gone back to the tree it's been a good few years since I've been down here in the depths of this drainage line beautiful Tambuti forest He has a rather well, poisonous milk latex. Somebody's been driving here, now there was talk, but there he is, straight ahead of us. Looks uh, one of the boys. I'm guessing that maybe then could be. For the last time I was here, it was this tambour, it was one of these. Tambutis. There was a Nyala, big Nyala male that was taken up by Yambilu Yadan and he was on the kill with his son in Duna. One of the boys of Kuru. So where is Arn? Is he climbing up? Very dark and deep in here. So he was standing here a minute ago. further than this. So he might be moving on. Because there's almost nowhere to go. to get through. I don't see it moving further the drainage line. Did you manage to get a And then it just vanish. Our leopards do things. They can just vanish. Yeah, they are pretty resilient creatures. Uh, they're very strong. Um, but this, uh, sorry, folks. This, um, and this might be a little bit too much. 
I'll just particular buff to uh, cope with on its own. You can see the one at the back um, going for the tail uh, and trying to get hold of that spinal column. Um, what it will try and do is just try and disable it a bit. It's got its paw pretty much well, it's claw pretty much linked into that tail. Kind of shows the teamwork that these uh, that these cats put in. You see that one in the back, kind of still trying to get a good grip. With the two at the front. Um, two at the front. I've got a. Very good grip. Just want to call this in, folks. Apologies. This line behind us keeps looking. Excuse my head if it gets in the picture. Okay, all stations. Uh, I've got uh, three male uh, in gala on the uh, young buff on uh, the. Uh, Vitella Access Road, just off the corner of Sandy Patch. Right, they got it down. Sad and upsetting this may be. It's just the uh, where that nature goes, unfortunately, sometimes. No. I'm surprised that uh, the rest of the herd are here. Maybe they singled this. Single this one out. Uh, they're trying to position it. Oh, well. Just trying to drag it off. As I was saying before the uh, transmission broke up, when we came around the corner uh, previously, um, the lions had moved, and we had heard that the I heard a buffalo were heading towards the lions. Um, 
So we kind of went off road to try and see what uh, see what signs we could see, see what tracks we could find. Uh, we couldn't really see anything, um, and I think we lost your signal again. And then uh, Jason, uh, who's on the back of the vehicle, heard um, a noise, and I heard it, heard the second noise, uh, and it was definitely. Uh, it was definitely the, uh, the lions catching hold. One of the fronts pretty got a pretty much got a possible grip. You can see the one at the uh, at the rump of the buffalo. It's already starting to uh, starting to feed. I think the, this, uh, the buff is, is dead now, so at least there is uh, some shade and grace in that. So the one in the middle is just shaking his head. I think he he, he had a good grip on the uh, on the throat of the buffalo, so strangling it basically. The lion that's at the rear of the buff, I uh, noticed when we were looking, I was looking at him, he does have a few, a few scratches and a few open wounds on him, not big ones, so maybe he got a slight horning uh, from the buff, so at least it would have put up a bit of a fight. Now, I think these are definitely part of the Birmingham, Bri Birmingham boys' pride. Cause the uh, the one that's closest to us, you can see on his left eye, he's got a bit of a bit of a mark. And I think uh, I think we identified that uh, that marking um, previously. It almost looks as though as though he's got a bit of a black eye going on there. Okay, um, well these guys are just kind of um, doing their thing. We're just going to uh, go back to Mark uh, briefly so he can uh, he can sign off and say goodbye to you. Uh, but I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll uh, look back to you guys very shortly. So uh, over to Mark and I'll see you guys soon. Be quicker than that. Hi everyone and welcome back to our vehicle and we're going to be saying goodbye to you now uh, we're going to be going back to Alex shortly because I think there's some pretty exciting things happening 
we sat with Karula for a little bit. Uh, she eventually put her head down and she's gone to sleep. She could do the same thing that the lion did. If something came along, she could probably jump up. There's still a little bit of that young impala in that big jackalberry. I didn't see the rest of the other kill. And we had that brief glimpse of one of her boys. So we're going to go back there later this afternoon. Hopefully we'll be able to find some action there later. But certainly a great thing to have up on the northern, the, the, the northwestern end where Alex is with those three males. Funny enough, when we started coming down here towards Karula and, and the leopards, there was a small group of buffalo heading straight towards Alex. I did send a message to him through final control not to leave and try and stick around because it's almost as though I had a premonition it was going to happen. Uh, those buffalo, I think, were doomed. Uh, one of them was at any rate. And it's just a sad thing, but it is life. That's what happens. And uh, those boys are going to be feeding quite well for the rest of the day. So I'm sure we'll get back to them this afternoon. In fact, maybe we'll try and open up with them later this afternoon. It's uh, exciting to have that kind of action here on Juma Game Reserve. My name is Mark, and Brian has been with me on camera with Thumb. Has Thumb got a name? Not yet. Colonel Thumb. Colonel Thumb. <laughs> with Colonel Thumb. What's Thumb today? Just a little bit of a cat. Uh, yes, whiskers. Maybe we should make a hippo thumb. But anyway, from those, from all of us on this vehicle, and we'll go back to Alex, and I'll see you all a little bit later. Bye bye, everybody. Okay, welcome back, um, welcome back, folks. Uh, we're still on these uh, on these three lines out of. Uh, uh, made a made this uh, buffalo kill. Uh, they're being quite um, they're being quite patient uh, in their in their feeding. Um, the one at the back has made a start, and oh, a bit of a warning swipe. Yeah, the one at the back will be going in through the anus is that it's uh, much easier to get through than, uh, than the thick hide of the buffalo. And usually they will tend to start towards the rear, towards the rump, and then work their way forward. A testament to the to the to actual power and the teamwork of being able to take down uh, this buffalo. It's not a big buffalo. Well, it is a big buffalo in comparison to to us, but um, it's not fully grown. But it's still very very strong, and very powerful. stay here for the remainder of this drive and I think uh, Mark and uh, Scott who will be uh, join, rejoining us this afternoon will be uh, coming past here to see these guys. Now one of the, one of the males has gone into the thickets to, to the left. Just going to keep an eye on them. He's just gone for a bit of a rest in the shade. 
It's been quite an exertion to, uh, to have pulled this buffalo down. Okay, so we've got about a minute to go, guys, before we, uh, before we do leave you. I uh, just want to say thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's been quite an, quite a quite a nice morning, um, quite an interesting morning to have seen uh, the action that we had with Kanuma. Uh, now uh, on these uh, on these male lines. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, hopefully see you this afternoon when uh, Scott will be back and he'll be joining Mark on drive this afternoon. Um, I'll be back in the control room. Um, so thank you very much for joining us, and we'll we'll see you soon. Until then, uh, we'll uh, we'll leave you with these lines.